like this. Pretty simple process. Now, something worth noting is this short side here, opposed to this long side, is what you see on the landing gear. So it's hard to, hard to visualize at the moment. Something like that, if that's the front of the model. So I tend to like to put the join on the inside here. What I often do is get this backwards and then put a really big ugly join on the visible side. But you know, that, that comes with, you know, you've got to be a pro to do that all the time. Anyway, I'm going to fiddle fart around here for a bit. Since we've got this sitting right, and we've managed to find the uh, thin CA, just going to wick a tiny bit in each side over here. Doesn't take much. The CA is a little bit bad, so I'm just going to give it a bit of encouragement. That's that. We've got a little gap there, but that'll be in the, on the underneath, and still looks pretty tidy. Um, what I like to do now is just at intervals, just wick a little bit in. Doesn't take much. Never really. I've never had this trim come off in ever, so I'm not particularly worried about it. That was way too much. I should find a new tip for this glue bottle, but I'm lazy. Took me long enough to find the bottle. So, I'm going to repeat that with the other side. Time to start putting the legs together. So these are quite nicely made and painted. Uh, carbon landing gear. Quite like it all the shiny red on my white scheme one. Um, we'll notice that the bolt holes are at different offsets. In this case, the wider offset is the front of the model. So we will throw the cuffs on first. So now these are obviously directional. But I can tell that doesn't go on that way. Goes on this way, the tapered end going towards the rear. This is hurting my brain. Tapered end going towards the rear and this longer side where we put the join towards the belly. I might lie this down on the side because we'll just do one wheel because obviously don't really need to do both. I think we can all figure out how the second side is going to be done. So now we're going to take our axle. This is the usual really nice design we get from Skywing. Nylock on this end and a little uh, fixing bolt, fixing cap screw and uh, machined aluminium washer to hold the uh, spat in position. It's a really nice setup. So I'm going to put that to the side for now. And I'll put the nylock to the side for now. Push that in. We need a 13mm socket. And in this case, I'm a bit of a Wurra fanboy. Um, my Nipex fanboy. My German friends will appreciate this with the parallel pliers. Let me crank this up. Now, it needs to be firm, but definitely don't over tighten this kind of thing. You're only going to make things weaker. Great, so that's just like when I'm tying down a load, that's not going anywhere. I'm going to throw one of these round boys on, and we're going to throw the nylock on the end. Nylock is a 8mm socket, so I'll chuck that on. The audio here is probably not the best, but just rattling around. And we're tight. Love that. None of those um, silly collets to come loose or anything like that. The next step, we're going to have to have a look at our spat here. Two and a half mil, not a two mil for this.
And I've just realized this one's for the other side. So I'll put that aside for now. And scramble back over with the correct side. Maybe a bit awkward to get an eye on camera. Yeah, that, let's see how that goes together. Those holes look like they're lining up pretty good. Use our uh, Loctite Triple Two. We don't need a lot of this. We don't, we don't want to get any of it on the paint that we don't need. So you want to get a bunch on the table really handy give yourself something to clean up uh, hopefully this focuses but really that's all you need and got the first one started put way too much on the second one And do that up. Doing these up fairly tight, but letting the lock tight do its job. So, pretty straightforward. Now, I don't know how that'll show up on camera, but we can see our axle lining up with the hole on the end there. Did notice there was a bit of paint in this hole, so it may take a bit of cleaning to get that started. I'll just clean that out with my trusty knife. Cramped up here under this camera setting. I need to make a bit more space, I think, for next time. Uh, same deal. We're going to want a bit of Loctite on this, but I'm just going to make sure it's going to go in first before I make a big mess of everything. Well, this has gone pretty terribly, so that's really good. I should pop this off and grab a drill, but just not feeling like getting up at the moment. Now let's get started. Time to bolt some landing gear on. As usual, I made it easy by putting the bolts in position for you. I really love that you don't get, you know, the massive amount of uh, bags of bolts that you usually get with uh, ARF models. This is such a really simple and tidy solution. I know it's not a game changer, but it's just it's these little things add up to make the experience a little bit nicer. I'm going to drop this landing gear on. I'm 
unscrew in just to hold it. I'll just check the framing there. Yeah, that's still acceptable. Yeah, same deal again. Chuck some of the old triple two Loctite. Being that these bolts are underneath the model and the vibrations that go on, if you don't Loctite these in, it's just inevitable that they're going to come out. It's time to retain the cuffs. I'm just going to use a pen for a lack of anything better, just to mark out where these cuffs are sitting. Push them up tight. No, I know. It's probably sacrilege to use a pen like that, but it does the job. I don't really see it. And I'm just going to rough up the edge there. And do this top and bottom on all four sides. Just scuffing up the paint just so the glue's got something to stick to. And to make this easier, I'll probably flip it over now because I will be doing the gluing with the plane upside down. Part of a lot of flex and, and uh, any glues that are hard, as I've found in the past, like high sole, despite how good high soles you know, properties are, they will fail from the vibration and that of landings and taking off and taxiing. So I've actually moved to, I was using a normal version of this, but I've actually found this clear stuff, which is quite nice because if it oozes out a little bit, it's clear. It's not a, you know, grimy yellow color like the other stuff. So anyway, I'm going to take some of this. I'm going to be fairly generous with it. Just lay a bead along right up to our line. Top and bottom. It's fairly uh, thick, so it actually hangs there quite nicely. You'll see if I've gotten that right as I pull this up be able to feel it grab on there, which it has. You can see a tiny bit oozing out. I'm actually really happy with how that's turned out. Um, I think it's struggling a bit with the light and the focus, but yeah, that should be a nice solid way to hold that on, given that this glue sets to, you know, fairly soft and remains fairly malleable. Um, they shouldn't be going anywhere. Well now, I'm going to repeat it on the other side off camera. Being a bit lazy after a long day at work, but I felt like doing some progress on this, so I thought we'd throw the tail wheel on. Super simple job, but I thought I'd just cover it just in case. Um, someone's not familiar with how the system works on these um, modern aerobatic planes. So the screws are already in. I'm going to need some Loctite for them in a sec. Got our tail wheel. So basically there's a cap screw here that locks in this bit of piano wire that's going to go out the back and is going to um, meet up with the rudder. So we need to make, we need to lock, lock tight um, this cap screw in, just some of the uh, trusty uh, triple two. And once we've done that, we can start looking at putting the rudder onto the plane. This is a slightly fiddly job because gravity works against you, but it's certainly not difficult. Got this nice little uh, tail wheel cover that I like that um, Skywing started doing. It's a neat little feature. So I've got some walk card on my screw. Down the hole. Well, 
I'm going to flip it over to do that because that's not going to work in my favour. So, time to throw the rudder on. We'll be able to see how this um, tailwheel steering functions now pretty easily based on this. So now it's um, part of the packaging for the tailwheel has this little uh, ball joint which we throw in here which is just to direct the tailwheel. We'll ignore that for a moment though. I've just um, high sold that in and I've done a really messy job because I'm really clumsy. That's all there is to that. So we'll take, our, take off our little collet. Our pin is reasonably tight. Pull that down. I'm going to align up our table. Line up these hinges. And it's in the first part, which is the start. Almost a two person drill here. Push this at the same time. Get some of the old fast forward going on for this bit. to my favorite thing that I'm by no means sponsored by. Definitely going to get some triple two Loctite on these little grub screws. I know I'm a broken record, but if it's metal to metal, it gets Loctite. If it's metal to wood, it gets some thin CA. Um, being around people and being the person that's missed things like this in the past, it's really frustrating when you first flight you figure out all the, you, the plane usually lets you know all the bits that you've uh, forgotten to lock tight up. And I've just realized you can't see where this is so I'm just going to bring the camera around in a sec. I'm just going to do it both these grub screws nice and tight. This ain't going anywhere. screws in there. See that bit of piano wire, it's got a bit of bend to it. It's not a real concern. Um, that's still standing up top, up straight, it just looks like it's at an angle. Um, I may put a little bend in that just to help it. The angle's not usually quite that great. And of course now I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bolt cutters and I'm going to cut down uh, the excess piano wire. Anyways, really happy to have knocked over a simple job and to now be able to put it on its wheels for the first time. Time to finish up the uh, tail end of the plane. Let's throw the rudder servo in here. Easy to find where the servo goes. That's where this little mark is. If you are finding it hard to figure out exactly where it goes, it's really easy. Just grab a torch or your phone light, shine it through from the other side. Anyway, I'm going to use the uh, trusted technique. Nice little feature here. I better get some screws. So I've got the horn centered, or I'm sorry, I've got the servo centered, and just channeling the same thing I say in every part of putting these planes together. 
some triple two Loctite. One down. Crank that up nice. And we're good to go. Now, better get the uh, linkage attached and start winding this turnbuckle. And we're in action. This is my first time playing with one of these feature surfers. All looks good so far. I'm just sitting at the 100% uh, resolution at the moment, but I'll max out the endpoints and um, hopefully on this inner hole I'll be able to get all the throw and keep the geometry nice and optimal. So I've just got this set up on a, on a rotary as usual and I'm getting almost to the bevel there, almost to the bevel here. And, um, that's on the 1.75 inch hole which is nice uh, and the outer hole on the horn again you you want to go as far in on the servo arm as you can as far out on the servo horn as you can make sure you're using every bit of travel available if you do this you're using all the torque your servo has giving yourself the best mechanical advantage paid a lot of money for those kilos in that servo you may as well use them <laughs> 